Let's talk some coins. Okay. So what kind of coins do you get excited by? Like you've got a blank check, you're a crypto billionaire, whatever it is, and you want to go out and buy some great coins. Tell me some of the great coins you've handled that you've dreamed about. Okay, so handled and dreamed about, or, mm -hmm. you know, so I think I've, you know, the top 100 U.S. coins, I've handled all but five or six. So okay. I've had that right. I, I, that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I've never handled a 13 nickel or 94 S dime, but indirectly handled an $18.04 dollar and, uh, handled, you know, 38 dollars half and, you know, mm -hmm. handled some, you know, great coins. But, uh, you know, as far as what gets me excited, I, I, you know, the, the first year of U.S. coins has always excited me. Yeah. So 1793 grief and chain cent, mm -hmm. um, you know, 1793 half cent, 1794, you know, half dime, you know, 1796 dime, 1796 quarter, 1796 and 97 half, and then of course the 1794 dollar. But I've always been especially drawn towards gold coins. Yeah. So uh, the 1796 two and a half, you know, with the stars and no stars, and then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our company logo is the reverse of the 179510 yeah. or 17955 with mm -hmm. the eagle holding the olive a wreath. So that's our company logo. So I've always, that's probably my favorite coin in terms of mm -hmm. coins is the 179510. Yeah. And it's a, you know, it's a nice size and it's, you know, there's gorgeous. And there's, there's one here on the board's floor today that's, you know, PCGS 66 plus and, you know, uh oh, I gotta go out there and check that out. That's, yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's yeah. in the collection. That's uh, uh, the tyrant collection. Tyrant yeah. collection, mm -hmm. and you know that coin's worth three or four million dollars. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a moose. And yeah. The second finest coin's a PCGS five. So I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know this coin's two and you know point and a half grade better. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It's, yeah, it's shocking. It, yeah. yeah, it's so, a great exhibit. It's like it first is, class. It's, it's shocking actually. It's something that anybody who has the opportunity to come to a Long Beach coin show, and they they generally do some display every Long Beach displaying some different facets mm -hmm. of their collection. They, they rotate them around, they put different things out, but the display is world-class, better than any other collections ever had for display. Yeah, so. it's phenomenal, you know, how deep it is. But I, you know, so, I'm like you too, I love early coins, early gold coins, they're so rare. You so that's, you know, yeah. so the early, that's, the early gold coins is number one, mm -hmm. and then right now my number one thing that, don't collect it, but you know, boy, I, when I see one, I want to keep it. And that is ancients. Mm -hmm. So we like the, the early Greek pieces, the Lydia pieces from 650 BC. And you tell somebody it's a gold coin that's mm -hmm. 2,700 years old. Yeah. It's you know the first gold coin that they used to trade, and mm -hmm. it's got um, you know a lion, it's got a you know a wolf and a sheep on it, and, you know. But truly, the ones that are, you know, then the Alexander the Great, uh, you know, mm -hmm. gold pieces are kind yeah. of cool, and I think that that's what you know. That, Going over the, you know, it, just traveling around Europe as they're conquering the continents and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. the number one love is the twelve Caesars, starting with Julius and then going all the way to the mission for the mm -hmm. first twelve Caesars, you know, starting fifty four BC. All yeah, the way let's up. plug the book. I want you to plug the book. It's a great <laughs> book. So tell everybody about the book that you wrote about it. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, uh, um, I'm also affiliated with a rare coin firm called the uh, uh, Finest Known, which and the president of that is Adam Crum. And so uh, we, we're very affiliated, close with uh, Finest Known. And Adam Crum and I uh, wrote a book uh, on, on the Twelve Caesars. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Adam did most of the work. I uh, came up with some of the research and some of the just the stuff. And then my our, my whole staff, from you know Adam Holt to Ryan Dempsey to Brian Hodge to um, Mike Smith, mm -hmm. you know, all contributed uh, to uh, to that book. So it's, it's really a a storytelling of the Twelve Caesars, and we have some old uh, vignettes that have never been published in there. Along with the, the photography, is phenomenal, and we used a set of coins that's among one of the finest Twelve Caesar sets of uh, put can you, together. Can you kind of explain to folks that aren't really familiar with the Twelve Caesars what exactly that is? So uh, you know, it starts off with Julius Caesar, and um, you know, they made three different types of coins throughout their uh, their reign as as Caesar. And really, Augustus Caesar is the first Caesar, but Julius you know, gets credited for being first. And then you, know, you have other emperors like uh, Tiberius, Nero, Claudius, and then you got some of the uh, ones that aren't as popular, like Caliglia. But uh, but Caliglia, Otho, Alta, uh, Otho, Galba, and Vitellius mm -hmm. are all from the 69 A.D. period. And so you had four emperors in one year, mm -hmm. just because they were being murdered or suicide or just you know just weren't very well liked so, you know, they're in office for you know they're you know emperor and caesar for three months and then then you you know finish at the end with vespasian and uh, titus and uh, uh, domitian but uh yeah i but gotta they, tell you i'm gonna interrupt you for a second you're a coin nerd 
You really are. Like you go from Silver Eagles, you go to 1795 Eagles, you go to the 12 Caesars. It's, your breadth is, is pretty comprehensive. That's pretty cool. Yeah, You're I don't. an old school coin nerd. That's yeah, good. I'm, uh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah uh -huh. I don't, I'll give you that. Yeah, coin yeah. geek, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's how I got started. That's uh -huh. what I was doing in high school. You know, mm -hmm. other kids mm -hmm. were doing all sorts of other things. I played a little football in high school, but mm -hmm. no, I was nerding out on coins. I'll yeah. give you that. So, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then you know they uh, they made uh, you know bronze um, uh, coins, uh, Cistercius big bronze pieces, mm -hmm. and then they made uh, the, you know, the aureuses are the you know, are the big are the are the gold coins, mm -hmm. and so and then the drachmas are the you know are the, are the silver pieces. So mm -hmm. just finding you know we had a mint state Julius Caesar coin the other day, mm -hmm. and then just find a mint state coin that's two thousand years yeah, old. Really cool. Gold, uh, no yeah, less, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, we've handled a mint state of almost all 12 Caesars. I, I don't think there's one known of Otho, Galba, and Caliglia, but on all the others, um, mm -hmm. it's just truly amazing that to, you can find a coin that struck the same way as it was 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago, and it's virs virtually uh, just perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, just the history that the coins tell, some of them, you know, have, you know, the camp or the embankment that the that the emperor was at when he when they struck the coin and mm -hmm. then there's other ones where they you know have their wives on the back or their sons or you know there's mm -hmm. tell the stories that these gold coins have to tell mm -hmm. and then during there's also some a really rare group of gold coins there's about 12 to 15 known from 69 AD and they're called civil war gold mm -hmm. um, ancients and so these aren't attributed to an emperor because they didn't know who the emperor was mm -hmm. or it was during, you know, because it switched every three months. Yeah. So you could have troops fighting out there and they could thought who they knew who their emperor was and they're an emperor behind. There's already a new, new yeah, one. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and so they would issue what they called these, you know, subsequent Civil War gold coins. A lot of them got melted down because mm -hmm. they weren't true emperor coins and those go for a lot of money, hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. But, uh, no, you're right. I mean, you know, just, you know, the things that our company deals in from ancients to modern to uh, uh, rare coins and mm -hmm. all of those things is, uh, are on Finest Snow's website. And, mm -hmm. um, we, you know, they they're probably have one of the best websites for ancient coins mm -hmm. and all of our, we do a lot with world too. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we were talking about this at lunch today that we sell more coins, world coins to Japan than we do any other country. That was a really yeah. interesting fact. You'd like, you you know, we didn't talk about it much after that. We talked yeah. about a lot of things. Cool. So Japan is the largest buyer. Well, right now they yeah. are. I mean, yeah. that's just based on talking to two or three other retailers. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's who we sell more to. And, mm -hmm. you know, I would have guessed it would be Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. Germany is the number one country that has the most collectors in it of coins. And mm -hmm. they're just, it's a, it's a nice size country. Mm -hmm. um, and they have such a rich history. And they've always collected numismatics. There's, mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to go to a town that doesn't have three or four um, coin shops in it. Yeah, so it's cool. totally, totally different than the United mm -hmm. States. And, mm -hmm. and then obviously England, Switzerland, France, Belgium, they're kind of rich in the coin side. But mm -hmm. Germany is really probably number one. <clears throat> but I think just Spain, I mean, uh, Japan just really has that love for, mm -hmm. and they're bu buying coins from Japan. I mean, maybe one in 10 is a coin from Japan, but they're from all over the rest That's of the world. That's interesting, yeah. And they don't buy any U.S. coin coins, right. but they're buying coins from the Netherlands, or they're buying French coins, or British hammered pieces, which you asked me at lunch, what were mm -hmm. some of my favorite coins? And mm -hmm. I think the British hammered pieces from the 13th, 14th century are just amazing pieces. Yeah. And the, think about how they were made. And the mm -hmm. Henry coin, VIII and King Arthur, it's yeah, exciting. You know, yeah, the coins are still in mint state. Uh, mm -hmm. We try to buy coins like that in the mint state, but yeah. it's pretty rare. So. That's cool. So you've been in the coin business a long time, decades, 50 years. How would you describe this coin market? So, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, 1980 was you know mm -hmm. kind of my was it was a that was the most insane coin market that uh, still blows away anything that we're seeing now. We mm -hmm. go to a show and you change all your prices the next day because you know, prices went up 10 percent every week. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not seeing that type of effect here today. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this is pre grading service. There, there was no um, um, you know. NGC or PCGS or any other thing. And, yeah. But I can tell you, David Hall was one of the leaders at buying premium quality coins mm -hmm. back then, you know, 50, you know, back in the 
70, mm -hmm. in 79, 80, 81, he would buy coins that were just phenomenal quality. Mm -hmm. There were 500 coin dealers that made over a million dollars in 1980. Really? Wow. And then there were probably 700 coin dealers that lost over a million dollars in 81. <laughs> yeah. Now I was an employee in 80, so I actually mm -hmm. made more money in 81 because mm -hmm. I went from being number two trader at Steve Ivey Rare Coins to being the number one trader with Steve Ivey in 81. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually made a little bit more money in 81 than I did in 80, mm -hmm. just because of being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So this market, you know, you know, obviously the we made a lot of money back then, but you know, with the advent of, you know, 1990 was another boom market. Mm -hmm. 99, 2000 was good, um, but this is just, um, this has been going on for a couple of years. It seems to have a lot of legs. It also has to seem a lot of new money. Um, you know, everybody's bigger now. You know, the bigger dealers, you know, the, you know, the top 20 dealers are all much bigger today. They're all mm -hmm. much more capitalized, financed, and, and carry the bigger inventories. And uh, so, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of outside money coming into the coin business, more mm -hmm. than there ever has been. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, you know, just looking at the auctions that, uh, the big three auction houses or four auction houses have had over the last six months. It's phenomenal. You know, I'm looking, yeah, you know, yeah. it's really, I told, I tell people, you know, you really should go look at the coins that sold in January, um, whether it be Heritage or Stacks or Legend. They all set records. You know, Heritage, I think, set, set 78 world records. And, mm -hmm. you, know, they were, you know, there were 74 world records that auction in January, brought $78 million. And there was truly just some phenomenal mm -hmm. things. And it wasn't just Heritage, Stacks, Bowers. Had, had a phenomenal, some phenomenal auctions. Legends did real well, and even you know Superior had some good stuff in their auctions. Yeah, so, yeah. all the auction houses are just killing. And I forget about one of the ones that I think is doing phenomenal. It's great collections. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah so it, Ian I, I don't in the cover of the yeah, ball, really. yeah, I sometimes forget about Ian and yeah. Gardner. I should. Mm -hmm. I, we're, we're really close and so we're good friends. Mm -hmm. But I didn't grow up with great collections. I grew up with. Old school stacks. Oh, old, I yeah. grew up with stacks heritage, mm -hmm. and you know, I especially grew up with stacks because mm -hmm. um, in Superior, I bought my first coin from Superior, so mm -hmm. in 1973. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay. So I remember talking at lunch. You would talk. You would share some stories about some of the collectors that you work with. Obviously, those are names are confidential. But overall, like, what advice would you give the newer collectors out there? Like, what mistakes would they typically make? Would you try to avoid? But what's the the, the, the syrup of what you would recommend? Oh, well, you know, like we were talking at lunch, you know, knowledge is king. I think, you know, collectors should, you know, find a dealer that they trust, mm -hmm. but still, you know, do their own research and do their own checking. I, my largest client uh, who never had bought a coin before, didn't seem that interested in coins. We put together, we're putting together a phenomenal set, you know, we're about $15 million into putting together a that's really, cool. I'm yeah. not going to talk about what we're building, but it's mm -hmm. really a fantastic set. Mm -hmm. and, and he goes, yeah, I really enjoy looking up PCGS's website and looking at the APRs and looking mm -hmm. up what other coins brought. And mm -hmm. Pretty much telling me he knows what I paid for the coins when it comes out of yeah. the auction. But I never even <laughs> thought he looked there. So right. uh, luckily I didn't, wasn't embarrassed by buying anything and marking it up too high. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I, finding a dealer that, uh, you know, we were at lunch with one of your collectors today. and. Um, you know, just finding a dealer that, you know, is, is trustworthy and honest and can look out for you. I think if a collector's trying to do it on, his, on his own and trying to save a little bit of money by being his own dealer, you know, he's going to make some mistakes and he's going to, you know, the, there's a reason why there's dealers out there. There's a reason why it's, it's, they're called professionals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I buy, and I, I do a lot in, the, in classic cars. And, I don't buy a classic car without running it by one of my dealers, and sometimes mm -hmm. I, 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 I pay them a little bit for their knowledge, mm -hmm. or I buy enough cars from them that I can still just go do it without right, their help. Right. So, but, yeah. but knowledge is king, and mm -hmm. I think that for you know for the you know we're talking about a, a collector going out there and buying something, I think having an advocate or having a dealer that you work closely with mm -hmm. is a, is a huge advantage, and just finding somebody that's very reputable and trustworthy, and mm -hmm. you know knows the knows the ins and outs of the auctions sure. and knows the ins and outs mm -hmm. of the deals and what's going to happen by working like that is you're going to get first shot at some really fresh stuff i mean you know the stuff that you have in your inventory is unbelievable and nobody really knows what you have in the, you know your secret blue boxes oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and every dealer has those secret yeah. blue boxes it's so always good stuff's always in the back right yeah so if, if you're a collector and you're sure. walking around and you're looking at the showcases you're looking at the worst 20 percent. it's kind of like mm -hmm. You know, buying a diamond online, mm -hmm. you know, there's a reason why the diamonds that are for sale online are for mm -hmm. sale. Those are the ones that 
have a little bit of imperfections. Those are ones that are off a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. won't mention the diamond websites, but you know, versus you know, getting the triple X diamond that's pure. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those don't make the websites. Mm -hmm. they, those get sold right away. Right, right. And the best coins are sold to the best clients that have relationships. Sure. That's true. Like Very so. true. Got some good observations. Mm -hmm. All right. So you dropped a little bit. Let's talk about a couple of your other passions, which I've had a little bit of exposure to. We'll show some pictures to y'all, but there's a lot of y'all out there that love cars, you collect cars, you know a lot about the history of cars. You know, usually a coin collector, I've noticed they kind of tend to collect another hobby or two. So tell us about your, your cars and how you got started and what, what's that like? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I, uh, my dad worked for Ford Motor Company in the 60s. Uh -huh. He actually painted the very first Mustang as it came off the line. Mm -hmm. um, he painted the third one and painted it candy apple red and gave it to my mom. So we kind of got, That's cool, you know, everybody else, you still have it? I go, no, yeah. we don't still have it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, so I've always kind of been a Ford guy. And then as time went on, I got into some of the other classics. I bought a, an early Jaguar XKE um, um, Roadster. And then, you know, my prize possession, which we did a video on, is probably my 1933, uh, uh, 1957 300 SL Roadster. And that's, uh, you know, Mercedes, and that's, you know, that's my favorite car. That's the car that I do rallies right. in. I'd, I'll probably ship it to Europe and do so some rallies right, on right it. Right here is we're going to put the picture of the car. Okay, yeah. right here, right between my fingers. They're going to show that, yeah. Uh, so uh, that uh, that's one of my favorite cars. But, uh, and I kind of avoided Porsches for a long time, but, mm -hmm. you know, I won't get into how many I have. You saw more mm -hmm. than you have mm -hmm. fingers and toes. You get and, a couple, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Between you and your daughter, you didn't have enough uh, digits. Yeah, so, yeah it was um, impressive, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. but uh, we have uh, one of the earliest Porsches made, and it's one of my favorite cars. It's a 1951 split window, and it's in perfect condition. And, mm -hmm. you know, I bought a Porsche last week, and I bought a Porsche Macan, so it's not mm -hmm. like I do all old stuff. I bought a brand new Macan, and then mm -hmm. prior to that, we, my son also um, races, and I do a little racing. But I mainly, I'm more uh, what I call tracking. And mm -hmm. For those that are car aficionados, you'll know the difference between tracking and racing. So mm -hmm. racing, you gotta have a race suit on, and you're in a race car, and you're going wheel to wheel in the corner, and mm -hmm. probably not gonna give an inch until one of you doesn't have a choice. Right. So I'm um, actually pretty excited. I, my son and I have an endurance race on Sunday, mm -hmm. so it's That's over cool. two hours long. So uh, we're gonna we're both in the brand new BMW Club Sport, so that'll be a little bit that's of fun. Cool. Yeah, and then he's uh, got another race at the same track earlier in the day, and mm -hmm. uh, but he he likes he races up in Sonoma and Laguna Seca and um, you know, a home track called Thermal Club, and uh, mm -hmm. so on. So that's cool. Sounds like a lot of fun, and I like the the correlation between coin collecting. It's very similar. Like if you understand cars more than you do with coins. The approach you take to build a successful car collection or, or acquire a special car, you also take the same approach for collecting coins too. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always remember there's there's a lot of Ferraris. Everybody asks you know, how many Ferraris do you have? You have Ferraris, mm -hmm. a, you know, and everybody knows about the Ferrari GTO. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a fifty, sixty million dollar car. And mm -hmm. my son was in a race, was in the race before, so he wasn't in with the race with those. But mm -hmm. there were three of them that went into the corner at Laguna Seca in a race, and you know, it's, going, it's like one hundred eighty million dollars going into the it's corner crazy. there, guys. Yeah, it's like Golden Tyrant's collection of Raw or something. Yeah, you know? so yeah. it's kind of crazy on that yeah. as far as you know, what you can think about that. But what I'm getting at is, you know, Ferrari Testarossa from like the earlier ones, 1963s, you know, that's 17 to, I guess it's a $30 million car today. Mm -hmm. But the one-offs, you know, the, you know, what we call patterns or what we call, you know, a prototype Ferrari from the 50s or, or uh, up to the early 60s that they made two or three or four of, that just has a price range. It's not going to be what... The, you know, the car, you know, those other cars I mentioned, there's 30 of them known, and that's kind of, you know, there's a, there's a group of people that want part of that, that club, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when you have a Ferrari, you know, that's, you know, they made five of, that's kind of like a yeah. pattern or something, you know, that's like a $5 million car. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just topped out there. Probably in this market, it's $10 million, but, because mm -hmm. um, everything's doubled in the last two years, and I mean everything's doubled. You know, you got a great comic book, great car, mm -hmm. great coins, I mean, the top-end coins, finest known, high-end cat coins, you know, all that stuff's done phenomenal well. I mean, the, we're talking about first-year of issues or, you know, finest known stuff. The mm -hmm. stuff that was over 150 to 500,000 and all those type of coins have mm -hmm. just done phenomenally well. Yeah. But some of the cheaper stuff is fun. Well, Morgans have doubled in four. So, I mean, it's like everything's kind of yeah. gone, gone up a lot. It's, it's amazing, you know, like mm -hmm. you pointed out, high-value antiquities, whether it's a high-end Ferrari or your Mercedes or coins. They always seem to do well over time. Everybody thinks, what's a great investment? I'm just always like, I don't know anything about investments. I don't know, I can't predict the future, but 
historically the best, especially like first year type coins, always tends to do well over time. Yeah, you know, one of the other things you have to, you know, what's your advice? And, you know, we were also talking about this, but I mean, you know, buy the best you can buy, you know, yeah. stretch a little bit, you know, if you're buying a space filler, it's mm -hmm. always just going to be a space filler. Right. Uh, but if you can buy something that's conditioned census or, you know, yeah. one of the finest known for the grade, it's going to do really well. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, we had a good time. This is right. good. Yeah, right. you've got a great story there. I know there's a lot more. We've got to peel it back a little bit more. We'll do that again one day, but this was fun. All right, for sure. And hopefully all the, the viewers out there got a little bit about the car market, too, which is exciting with the history of your career and just, you know, 12 seizures. I mean, that's really exciting. Yeah, so thank appreciate you. It. I appreciate right. it. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Right on. Thanks. Yeah, that was cool.